Hello everybody. I hope you are in the mood for some plain talking. So I did intend to put a strong warning on this in the description, but let's just play it safe. If there's anyone that's dainty about language, this is not going to be your video because we're going to use the spiritual as fuck deck, the rebel deck, which has fuck prominently laced into most of its cards. And then we're going to have some affirmators, which are more gentle, but I can't tell you when we're going to have what. <laughs> this is going to be unusual because for the first decks I mentioned, they're two-sided. There's really no point in me laying them down because I'm going to have to pick them up to read them anyway. So that's why I'm giving you a candle and some bubbles to look at. At least you'll have some amusement. And then I decided to throw in a couple of affirmators decks because at least then I can put a card down for you to see. I did try to pick out a more colorful background so there's at least some design detail you could be watching. But it may not be as visually satisfying as other pick of cards where you can look at the card the whole time. So now, how to pick your pile. The first pile, we have the pyrite sphere. Try to get it over the candle so you can see how pretty it is. For pile two, we have tiger's eye. And for pile three, we have celestite. Now you're not tied to picking up from the spheres, of course. You can access your intuition in any way you normally do. So you may just get the number in your head. You may get a vision of a number. You may hear it. Or you may just know, oh yeah, that pile is mine. Hopefully now you have had a chance to choose and I'm going to tell you that I am shuffling off camera because my setup makes a big wiggle and bang. But I have the intention to get flyouts during your card selection. So you won't get the shuffle, but you will get real time selection of your cards. If that makes sense. So we're going to start with pile one. And we're going to start with the Spiritualist Fuck deck. Now, hopefully I've gotten you used to it. Just in case you were thinking, I don't normally care for those words, but I'll see if I can handle it. If you've been cringing so far, this isn't going to be a reading. These cards are intended to help you get your shit together. And don't we all struggle with that one on occasion? So here we go, pile number one. Let's get you... Okay, that was quick enough. Your first card is... Your wound is probably not your fault. But your healing is your responsibility. Oh, well, that's pretty mild. You'll never be free of the people who harmed you until you take full responsibility for your own healing. No matter what family you were born into, what body you got stuck in, or what weird shit has happened to you along the way, this is your life and no one else's. Be tender with the parts of you that are hurt and the parts of you that are struggling. Take ownership of your whole, beautiful, dented, pieced together self. If you blame someone for who you are, you give them ownership of you. That sucks wet shit, doesn't it? Focus on what you can do right now to be your very own badass healer. Bam! Okay, let's get another one. Oh, there we go. All right, I have to show you this one, so at least you can see the front. Oh, oh, oh. It's okay to start the fuck over if you have to. Did you fuck up? Start over. Did things fall apart? Start over. 
every day isn't a new beginning. Every moment is. Deep as fuck, I know, right? Quit holding on to old mistakes and shit. Just start the fuck over. And the next one is, if you wouldn't say it to a friend, you shouldn't say it to yourself. Check your thoughts with this simple test. When you catch yourself being a jerk, respond the way you would if someone was saying that shit to your best friend. A simple, bitch, please, usually does the trick. Today, say as many, bitch, pleases, to yourself as you need to shut your jerk down. Good common sense, gotta say. Guilty of that one for sure. Bitch, please. Okay, yeah, thanks. Now I'm getting so distracted by the good advice here. Let me get, oh, there we go. Oops, except I have to hit the floor for that one. Thanks a lot. All right. Okay, I'm not even sure I can even figure out how to say this. B. Oh, okay, got it. Be unfuckwithable. Had to think for a minute how to say that. If you find yourself fucked with, take a moment to reflect on what part of you is out of whack and susceptible to being fucked withable. Then check that shit with some self love. When you're filled to the brim with love, Nothing anyone says or does bothers you, and no negativity can touch you. You know what that makes you? A badass. A big old spiritual badass. All right, let's go to the rebel deck here for a couple cards. Oh, yep, okay. Pile number one. Your very first card is you are loved. You are here for a reason. Don't fuck it up. And stop sleeping so damn much. Wake up. You're missing some cool shit. So that could imply some depression. Sleeping a lot. Also could be that you're drained of energy. And I just saw a card in here that said I get 10% off my next purchase. Awesome. What else does Pile 1 need to hear from you, Rebel Deck? Okay, got it. It's dark and you can't see a fucking thing. Get your head out of your ass, pronto. Believe what you see. Face reality or live in fucking la la land. Choose bravely. And step away from the crazy making diet for a hot second. Kale and spirulina taste like ass. Eat some yummy shit. Bacon, chocolate, beer. Get some. All right, let's go to a couple affirmator cards from the relationship deck so you'll have something to look at before I go back to the others. Okay, here we go. Oh, two of them. Well, you're not going to be able to see those anyway. Oh, let's not burn the cord. Okay, see? I guess I'm just going to leave you guys looking at the damn bubbles because I'm going to end up torching my house. So you're just going to have to look at bubbles the whole time. This card is grace. I face disagreements with grace and flow through the ups and downs of my relationships without getting thrown off center. With grace, I'm able to keep my cool, be my best self, and not resort to name calling even when that crappy poo-poo face is being a douchey barf monster. The next one is, I'm a catch. I'm a total catch, and I know all the reasons why. I know that anyone would be lucky to be with me, and that doesn't mean I'm arrogant or snobby. 
Self-respect is just one of many qualities exhibited by this complete and utter babe. Okay, if you insist, that's a lot, but okay. So next we have Harmony. I know in my heart that when something is right, it feels easy and breezy, even though that sounds cheesy. With this in mind, I banish all stress, insecurity, and tedious work from my relationships. Then I invite harmonious relationships into my life and let them show up on their own time. You know, easy breezy things are rarely punctual. Warmth. I focus on warmth and let it guide all my interactions. No matter how others behave, I choose to respond warmly. With warmth, I can melt any icy exterior. I can soften any hard feelings. I can microwave any pizza. Today, I adopt the saying, kill them with kindness and turn myself into a warm and loving serial killer. Next, there better be some humor in this one because this is a word that most of you hate. Surrender. Hear ye, hear ye. You are hereby being called to unclench your grip on any old thought patterns that are getting in your way. Surrender any ideas that make you feel like a victim of circumstance or which make your dream relationship seem like an impossibility. The mayor of reinvention has just arrived and has made the following decree. Limiting beliefs about yourself and your life are heretofore, forthwith, officially, and indubitably declared for the birds. And we have perspective. What does a hawk see when it flies over your house? besides the family of mice living nearby that you didn't know about. What will your current problems, conflicts, complaints look like when you're 80 years old and you gaze back on the timeline of your life? In this moment, you are being given the gift of clear perspective, of knowing that in the end, everything is going to be probably much better than okay. Think large enough and even big issues become small. Become an 80-year-old hawk and you're really on to something. Then we have curiosity. Meeting new people, I remember what a treasure trove of opinions, interests, and stories they are. But these treasures will only be unlocked if I embrace my curiosity. So I'll be curious and you be interesting. Deal? And lastly, from this deck, wholeness. I am complete, whole, and filled with love. I have everything I need. If I ask or look for more, I'm ignoring the love and gifts that are already in my life. Instead, I'll be grateful and acknowledge that anything else would be extra icing on life's case. FYI, to whoever is listening, Extra icing is totally welcome, as it's obviously the most delicious part. All right, let's go back to spiritual as fuck. For pile number one, please, spirit. What else do they need to know? Okay. Be kind-hearted as fuck and full of love, but maintain boundaries like a motherfucker. Letting people fuck with you is not a spiritual attribute. Think about Archbishop Desmond Tutu. That dude wouldn't have done the good shit he did in the world if he let people walk all over him. Even His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, tells people to fuck off sometimes. In his own compassionate as fuck way. lot here about not being taken advantage of, being kind, but not a pushover, not a doormat. Okay. It's okay, guacamole. I'm extra as fuck too. Being extra 
means you give a shit. Maybe you give a shit about your on fleek eyebrows, or you give a shit about the environment, or you give a shit about making your ass clap. Be extra today. Yup, it's a thing. Wow, news to me. I don't know what fleek is either. If anyone knows what fleek is, comment please. <laughs> A little out of my generation, I guess. All right, a couple more of these. We'll go to the Rebel deck, and we'll end with a couple affirmators. Vibrate so high that toxic people fall back because they no longer know how to approach you. Know how you can tell you're onto some hardcore personal growth? Your perspective gets bigger, and your inner circle gets smaller. It may be the people who want to gossip quit texting when you stop talking shit. If you're busy manifesting your dreams, keeping your side of the street clean, and working on those old gnarly wounds that people want to avoid in themselves, some people are bound to disappear. Be kind to yourself and to others as you outgrow people and places. Grab your own butt. Love yourself. Whatever type of butt you have, you're a complete psychopath if you can't see that butts of all kinds are super fucking awesome. Look around at all the butts of the world. Big butts, teeny tiny butts, jiggly butts, orangutan butts, elephant butts even. Grab your butt right now. Aren't you lucky to be the kind of animal that gets to have a butt? Answer, yes, you are lucky. Very, very lucky. Next one is, loving is its own reward. The very act of loving is the benefit of the risk. We all want to be loved back. We all want to be supported. But when you grow up, you see that it has nothing to do with how the person who receives your love reacts and all about you just being willing to open your heart in this dangerous world. Be a gangster and love the fuck out of someone today. Expect nothing in return. You are not required to set yourself on fire to keep other people warm. You know how you can tell if someone is taking advantage of you? You feel like a shit after giving to them. That shit isn't healthy for anyone. Put the matches down and back away. They can get warm on their own. Now go do something kind for yourself. That's better service to the world anyway. Yeah, a lot about kind here. Maybe I have some fellow unkind to self people in this group. Nama slay. The slay in me recognizes the slay in you. At some point, you've got to get up and act like the people you admire. You probably know someone who is slain at life right now. Spend today doing the shit they do. Better yet, take them to coffee and ask them how exactly they managed to slay so hard. Then recognize where you are capable of the same kind of slay. All right, let's do a few more rebel cards and then we'll end with the Affirmators deck. What else is this pile one? Oh gosh, okay. You are giving too many fucks. Give zero. Yeah, I'm afraid this file is familiar with being taken advantage of. I'm sorry. Been there, done that. Don't believe every shitty thought you have. Thoughts can be sneaky, lying bastards. And your last one is, you need a good fucking cry. Get the ugly cry on. Let that shit go. Your soul will thank you. And spirit a couple of this deck. Okay, this was flipped backwards, so you get manifestation. If you could have anything you wanted, what would it be? Get specific and get greedy. You are holding a magic wand, and you can conjure up anything. 
Could it be that when you declare your wishes out loud, you're actually casting a spell for your dreams to come true? Or is it just that in a very practical sense, the more people you speak with about your dreams and desires, the more folks there are who know what you want and might have the means to help you make them happen. Either way, stop waiting and start manifesting. But don't use the word if you don't want to. Oh, gosh, okay. You got a shitload of these, so this is <laughs> where we're going to end. <laughs> the first one is power. I am strong. I am grounded. I am powerful. I am like a cross between a dinosaur and a tank, but not a tank that is used for war. I am like a peaceful, loving dino tank who feels so strong it doesn't need to do anything but be. And then you got the communication card. Wonder how that other person's feeling? Ask them. Wish they knew how you were feeling? Tell them. You've just been drafted into the communication army where there is a strict do, ask, do, tell policy. Speak with kindness and gentleness and reach an understanding. If you don't, Assumption will just make asses of everyone, including the person who came up with that aphorism. <laughs> patience. Congratulations. You've been granted more patience. You may start using it right away or much, much later. Waiting a long time is the sort of option now afforded to you by greater patience. Can you believe it? Look at this. You're still reading and you haven't started getting annoyed yet. Imagine how this patience will transform your life. Imagine how easy it will be to go to the post office. And then we have worthiness. I am worthy of the ultimate happiness. I deserve and accept it. And damn it, I'm not going to feel guilty about it when I get it. Guilt is not invited to my happiness party. I won't even tell him where it is. If he asks about it, I'll be like, no, I think you're thinking of something else. And then I'll run away very quickly. And your last card is inspiration. There is a voice of inspiration within me. Right now, it's only a whisper. But the more I listen, the louder it will get. Soon it will be a flawless speech voiced by James Earl Jones through a megaphone with lots of applause. All right, pile one pyrite sphere people. I hope you enjoyed your cards. If you did, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and just a small channel hoping to grow a bit. And if you'd like to subscribe, that would be totally awesome. Thank you. Take care. Hello group number two. I have shuffled all four decks before I came on because the banging is kind of irritating and it wiggles the table which wiggles the camera. And because these are not cards that I can show you, I have given you bubbles. At least it's something to look at. Bubbles with a little bit of candlelight. How romantic, huh? Your first card is, courage is knowing it might hurt and doing it anyway. Stupidity is the same. That's why life is hard. What is the difference between courage and stupidity in your life? A big part of adulting is not crossing the line where your rebelliousness turns into recklessness. The people who ride this line most gracefully usually have a clear eye on their values and a good friend or two who will tell them when they're being a dumbass. 
If you can't decide if you're being brave or stupid, call a friend. Hint, don't call a dumbass friend, though. Pile number two, please, spirit. Oh, boy. Okay, we got a shitload of them here. Stick with the people who pull the magic out of you, not the madness. Notice how you feel when you're with a person. If you feel like shit, don't hang out with them. It's that straightforward. For reals. They don't have to be bad people for you to choose to not engage. It may just be your reaction to them. Even if you can't remove yourself from their presence completely, you can at least check in with the part of you that gets crazy and give it the love it needs. Forgive the fuck out of someone today. You're probably thinking, it's not that easy. Sorry, but yes, the fuck it is. Take all the energy you've put into being mad and making a case for how wrong so-and-so is and let that shit go. Start small so you can get the hang of it. The driver who just cut you off? Yell, I forgive you! And wave. Secret bonus perk. Forgiving someone usually pisses them off worse than anything else. Sometimes crushing it means asking for help. Only fools or suckers think that they can do it all on their own. Ask for help. Then take the help. Let other people be a part of your success. Don't be stingy about letting people share in whatever kickassery you create. Every real baller has a crew. Also, you don't know everything. That's just a fact. Drink water and mind your own fucking business. Enough said. Okay, then. And... Your growth scares people who do not want to change. Are you getting shit from people you think should be cheering you on? If you thought of them as scared people instead of giant assholes, could you be more compassionate with them? Or at least let their current assholishness slide for now? Mmm, compassion. Tastes nice and minty fresh, doesn't it? Now let's get a few from the Rebel deck. That project, that person, that idea is waiting. Get after that shit. The world has your back. Oh. Fucking apologize. Seriously. Just do it. We got a lot of bad apologies and forgiveness here. And not listening to assholes that tell you you shouldn't. Probably. That's kind of what I'm getting. The next one is be fucking grateful. Shit could be so much worse. Ah, yes. And next is stop fucking whining. No one wants to listen to that shit. Complaining makes you weak. You have the strength to change your world. So do it. You guys aren't getting any slack here, are you, Pile 2? Okay. Get some fucking sleep. You're being an ass because you're fucking tired. Face the pillow. Now. Get the fuck out of your head. Get in your heart. It misses you. And the last one for this round, you are going through some tough shit. Everyone has their turn. Welcome to yours. Gather your tired ass up and handle it. And now we'll get some affirmator cards from the relationship deck. Oh, gosh, dang it. I'm finding cards that didn't even know were under here. Sorry guys, you're gonna have to wait. I'm disappearing under the table. Oh, jeez Louise. Okay. Oh, well it was worth bending over for. Pleasure. I give myself permission to feel pleasure 
and I let that pleasure rush into my life in a decadent display of over-the-top abundance. Then I realized that pleasure has been waiting at my door for a long time. It's just that pleasure doesn't knock on doors because loud noises aren't super pleasant. Can we just keep keep you off the floor cards? It's only so much bending over I can do. Oh, maybe. I hope you're not getting offended by this. The cards are not wanting to come out now. You know, it's hard to hear sometimes that we've been, uh oh, not taking control of our own lives, our own lives and just, you know, feeling like sad sacks. But you know, we've all been there. Trust me, me too, plenty of times. So the next card is Benefit of the Doubt. I believe in the basic goodness of other people and I give them the chance to show it. If they prove me wrong, that's on them. At least I can go to sleep knowing that I practice trust and forgiveness rather than fear and doubt. And later on, if I need to, I can always change my mind and retroactively judge them like it's my career. And then we have depth. As new people show up in my life, I look for all the weird, wonderful, complex layers below their surface. I can't be surprised by someone's depth of character unless I'm willing to peel back the outer layers and go a little deeper. It's like the brand new saying goes, don't judge an onion by its haircut. A couple more of these and then we'll go back to the spiritual as fuck deck. A couple more spirit, please. Not on the floor. Yeah, I'm being bossy bitch. That's just the way it goes. You're used to it. Okay, here we go. Teamwork. I'm determined to be a good teammate in all of my relationships. If we disagree, I'll resist the urge to place blame and look for a way to solve the problem together. When we're a team, everything's a game. And when we're on the same side, nobody can lose. Not even the Cubs, finally. Okay, I don't get the baseball reference but maybe you do all right let's go back to spiritual as fuck oh, oh eh, eh, eh. yeah good save huh all right ancient proverb if you must meet more than two assholes a day you're it anais nin said we don't see things as they are we see them as we are so, one or two assholes could be random. Three assholes is a clear sign you've got on your sphincter glasses. Take a moment to check in with your perception of things. It might just be that you, Cupcake, are the asshole. Luckily for you and everyone else, you've got the power to change that. Okay. Gossip dies when it hits wise ears. Here's how to get wise. Refuse to hear stories that aren't yours to hear. Refrain from telling stories that aren't yours to tell. If someone comes at you with an OMG, did you hear about? Stop them right there and ask if it's gossip, rumor, dirt, or other such junk. This tends to kill everyone's shit talking boner. Yeah, gossip, not cool. Oh, uh, okay. Not giving a fuck is better than revenge. Revenge sucks. Just watch a superhero movie and look at the villains. Those guys suck. Revenge is whack and petty and gives you wrinkles. You know what's hot? Being the bigger person and letting shit go. Hair flip that shit, honey. And move the fuck on. Couple more of these, and we'll go back to Rebel Deck, and then we'll do the last Affirmator Deck. Well, okay, make a liar out of me. This is way more than a couple. Okay, I'm not gonna argue. 
Three ways to fail at everything in life. Number one, complain about everything. Number two, blame others for your problems. Number three, never be grateful. Today's to do's. Number one, don't complain about shit. Number two, take full responsibility for every single thing in your life. Number three, be grateful for shit. Tonight's to do's. Number one, look at yourself in the mirror. Number two, see how hot you are for yourself. Number three, be grateful for your bad self. Fuck what they say. What someone, anyone else says about you doesn't matter. Really and truly, it doesn't. If you heard it secondhand, it super doesn't matter. And if the person isn't your higher power, your boss, or your best friend, it super duper doesn't matter. Think about how much more time you'd have to dream up cool new shit if you really and truly stopped worrying about what people say about you. You think Martin Luther King cared what other people said when he wasn't there? No, he was out marching and doing good shit. Let him talk. Do your shit. And last from this deck, holding on to resentments is like taking a shit in your own heart. Everyone has survived. Oh, wait. They were two stuck together and I almost read the wrong back. So, let me start again. Yeah, it's that gross and pointless. Let that shit go. Look up a loving kindness meditation on the internet and do it. Focusing on love is like taking a baby wipe to your heart. Much better than shitting in it. And the card that was stuck says, it's up to you to find beauty in the ugliest days. Everyone's survived some super shitty days. But even when it comes to those crappiest of crap days, if you look back, you can pretty much always find something beautiful. Maybe someone was unexpectedly kind to you, or for a split second, the startlingly gold sunset made you forget your life was crumbling. Or perhaps there were donuts with sprinkles at your first AA meeting. The trick is to train yourself to spot the beauty in that very moment, AKA real time. It makes the ugly days a little less ugly. All right, let's get a couple more Rebel cards. Pile number two, please. Okay. You need a good fucking cry. Get the ugly cry on. Let that shit go. Your soul will thank you. Yeah, you know, need to release sometimes. And now it says you need a big fucking hug. Squeeze. Uh-huh. Take a fucking trip. Go see some shit. Do some new things. Talk to people cooler than you. Oh man, I would so take that advice. I need to get by water. I haven't been by water for the longest time. Here's one that flipped over. You are being shady. Watch out. Shit could get ugly. Oh my goodness. Almost lost the whole pile again. But here we have, ask a fucking expert. Don't rely on your friends or the internet. Listen to a damn professional. Oh boy. Okay, so we got a few that came out. The first one is don't talk to anyone. Don't look at anyone. You need some fucking time alone and you know why. Stop obsessing. You are not the fucking center of the universe. And lastly, take a shot. Don't take 12, take one. Okay, maybe two. Move on. And so last, we're gonna have a few cards from the Black Affirmators deck, not the relationship deck. I think it's just the plain old original deck, but we're just going with the black deck. Okay, there is a ton in this pile. So this is what we're gonna end with. Ideal partnership. I am a rare and precious find and my brilliance will be reflected back to me when I am paired with the true match. 
My ideal partnerships and working relationships are easy and free-flowing. I deserve greatness because I am greatness. And to paraphrase Rumi, what I'm looking for is also looking for me. In fact, he or she might be paraphrasing Rumi right now. Hmm. Clarity. Stopping to listen to my inner self, I can easily separate my intuition from my mental chatter. The clarity of my intuition is a sweet, simple fruit that tastes familiar. And the mental chatter is a confusing, bitter rind that I shall peel off and chuck into the garbage or compost heap if your mental chatter happens to be organic. Story of my life. As I tell myself the story of what's happening in my life, I choose to make it the kind of story where even the tough parts have a sort of inner beauty. It's ultimately a happy story where every character, no matter how wicked, is doing their best. And let me tell you, it'll be worth it when I earn that Pulitzer Prize for Best Inner Monologue. Positive Thinking in the garden of my mind, I water the good thoughts and weed out the bad ones. I throw in forgiveness and empathy seeds by the handful if I want. And I take a lawnmower to that jealousy and resentment patch. I'm a pretty badass mind gardener. That's cute. Good idea. Then we have options. As I open to the abundant possibilities of my life's path, I'm reminded that I always have unlimited options. Life is a buffet, and I allow myself to choose whatever makes me happiest without limiting thoughts like, you can't put mac and cheese on your baked potato. Who says not? Yeah, that's bullshit. Put mac and cheese on your potato. That sounds really good. And then we have get centered. When it gets to be too much, whatever it is, I close my eyes and return to my center. In my center, I have the wisdom and tranquility of a, and here's where you fill in the blank, favorite animal, holding a, fill in the blank, magical item, floating through space on a, fill in the blank, piece of furniture. Two more here, maybe three, they're stuck. Come on. Good things to come. There are so many amazing gifts coming my way. I can't see them now. Okay, I can't talk. Let me try that again. There are so many amazing gifts coming my way. I can't see them now because I respect the general convention of not peeking under wrapping paper. But they will show up when the time is just right. And that's when I'll remember how much fun it is to be surprised. Playfulness. I am a playful participant in life, and I always have the option to make something a fun game rather than a heavy burden. Mary Poppins put sugar in the medicine for a reason. That lady really knows how to party. And your last card, connection. I'm connected to the multitudes, and I can access their support at any time. Even a stranger offers a sense of comfort when they smile at me or make a dumb comment about the weather. Everyone is waiting to connect. All I need to do is open myself up and pay attention. Note to self, work on witty banter about weather-related stuff. So those were your cards, pile or group two, that chose the tiger's eye sphere. You know what? I'm saying that's tiger's eye, but I don't think so. I think that's petrified wood. Okay, I'm a dipshit. What can I say? I'm saying that lovingly. <laughs> okay, so if you enjoyed your cards or you enjoyed this kind of raw and real, pick a card. I would love to see a thumbs up so I know to do this again. And if you would like to subscribe to my channel, that would be awesome. Thanks, pile group number two.
I ate pile number three. You know, some odd things happened when I was shuffling your cards. And just now on the last one, I grabbed my amethyst point to do the clearing symbol that I always do. And I almost threw it off the damn table. So I am giving you playing cards flying across your screen because I can't really show you these cards without torching them on my candle. And most of them I would just be briefly showing you the front before I snatched it back to read the back anyway. So just enjoy the cards. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to switch up the order with you because I don't know why. I feel like maybe I need to be gentle. And a couple of these decks are not at all gentle. So we're going to start with the Affirmator's Relationship deck. And if you are feeling stressed out or having a bad day, I'm sending you a big hug virtually. For pile number three, please, Spirit, for the highest good. Okay, oh, and of course, on the floor. Your first card is Curiosity. Meeting new people, I remember what a treasure trove of opinions, interests, and stories they are. But these treasures will only be unlocked if I embrace my curiosity. So I'll be curious and you be interesting. Deal? And then we have boundless love. Today, I'll open my eyes a little wider and walk a little taller, noticing that the world around me is filled with tiny miracles. With this in mind, it's easy to fall in love over and over again with everything from honeybees to neon signs. And while I'm feeling this inspired and this in love, everything else sort of falls into place. Uh-oh. Okay, that was a little weird. That was shady. That You almost tricked me. But I'm on to you, Jeff. Oh, holy shit. That's a lot of them. Okay, fine. So the first card is Levity. Laughter is the best legal medicine. And it looks like it's time for you to take a sweet, sweet hit of it. When someone annoys you or a plan goes awry, try finding something funny in there. And if you ever feel like the butt of the joke, remember that the only difference between someone laughing at you and someone laughing with you is that in the first version, you're not laughing. You always have the option. So opt to lighten up. It's legal in almost 200 countries. And then we have tact. I speak and act with care, remembering that impulsive words or harsh tone can sometimes hurt others. If it feels like I'm walking on eggshells, I'll remind myself that those eggshells might actually be a shop full of china and I might actually be a bull. Then I'll remind myself to stop mixing metaphors. Ooh, and then we have sensuality. Embracing sensuality doesn't necessarily mean you're a middle-aged swinger. It simply means you're savoring one of the coolest aspects of being alive, sensory input. It's time to get decadent. I said that with a T and there's no T in there, so I apologize, let me start over. It's time to get decadent and reward yourself with gifts for the senses. You could drop a wad of cash on champagne and chocolate, or you could tune in and enjoy the incredible gifts around you. The taste of an orange, the sounds of the forest, the texture of corduroy? I don't know your life. The point is, it's time to savor whatever your senses can grab hold of, even if that means you're being sensual. Gross. All right, let's do the Rebel deck next. For group number three, please, Spirit for there. Okay, so I just got a whole wad here. The first one is, you are giving too many fucks. Give zero. Next, laugh. Where the fuck is your sense of humor? Now that's something more about sense of humor, so maybe you guys are just taking life too seriously. 
It really does help to find something to, to be a smartass about so you can laugh instead of cry. The next card is you are the best thing to ever happen to you. Go easy on your ass. Buy your own damn drink. Yeah, or your own flowers. A couple weeks ago, I didn't want to use my card for a cheap prescription, so I wanted to grab something else. And I bought the very first bouquet of flowers for myself that I had ever purchased. And you know, they're still alive even. I haven't killed them off yet, and it was nice. So maybe go treat yourself to a $6 bouquet of flowers. Next we have, you look like a shit show. You're a hot mess. Fact. Clean yourself up. And then take a shot. Don't take 12, take one. Okay, maybe two. Move on. Then we have stop obsessing. You need some fucking t oh, stuck together. I'm giving you the wrong back. Let me try that again. Stop obsessing. You are not the fucking center of the universe. And the one that was trying to hide says, don't talk to anyone, don't look at anyone. You need some fucking time alone, and you know why. You guys were trying to hide that one from me, weren't you? And then we have put the fucking phone down. Too much screen time is making you awkward and sad. Go talk to a live person. Yeah, that's good advice. All right, now we're going to go to Spiritual's Fuck Deck. Or pile number three, please, Spirit, for their highest good. What do they need to hear? Oh, okay. Well, apparently up quite a bit. Your first one is, once you start laughing, you start healing. Now, isn't that funny? Guys, you can see there is a repeat on the message here. You need to stop taking life so seriously. Find something to laugh about. Find something that makes you happy. Now that I'm done lecturing you, let me read the back. If you aren't ready to laugh at what's going on, then laugh at something else. The internet is filled with ridiculous shit. Laugh at that, or call up your best friend who you trust to make fun of your problems in that loving, brutal way they do. Just start laughing. You don't have anything to lose. Yep. Big message here for you guys. Next one. Your gut knows what's up. Trust that bitch. Your gut wants to talk. And it always has your back. All you gotta do is listen up and not be a punk about whatever it's got to say. Even if you're fuzzy on the right thing to do, your gut usually knows what the wrong thing is to do. Maybe the right thing to do is anything but what you're tempted to do out of spite, fear, or impatience. Yeah, probably that. Like 99% usually. Sorry about the stumble. I was thinking about how <laughs> I need to go potty. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, like that isn't TMI. Sorry. Your next card is upside down. Self-care isn't selfish. If you were really going to take care of yourself today, what would you do? So, why aren't you doing that? No healthy person wants you to sacrifice yourself for them. No healthy person. Really, anyone who wants that from you is a selfish jerk. Don't assume that the people in your life are selfish jerks who can't handle you doing what you need to do for yourself. And then we have go outside and do shit. It's been proven all over the place that trees and nature and fresh air and all that shit help fight depression, anxiety, addiction, and pretty much anything else that might ail you. Find some place to put your feet in the grass or the dirt or the water or anywhere that's not concrete. A five minute nature break can reduce the amount of shitty thoughts in your brain drastically as And then own your awesome and stay humble as fuck. List five things that you love about yourself. Now list five ways you're just like every other human who's ever lived. Go forth, you fabulous little snowflake, and be like everyone else with your unique bad self. 
And then we have, look at the fucking moon. Just look at that thing. It's lovely as fuck, right? You're welcome. Okay, I think I'm gonna get, yeah, I'm gonna get a few more of these and then I'm gonna do the black affirmator deck. Sorry, I'm losing track here. Yeah, when you gotta pee. That's <laughs> what can I say, guys? I think you already figured out I'm a little bit crass. <laughs> I'm not fooling anybody. Never been one to avoid discussion of bodily functions either, so I apologize if that offends, but it is who I am. Now, the present moment is ah uh, fucking amazing. Open up your eyeballs and look around. Even if you happen to be in the shittiest of shit times, there's probably something beautiful to notice right this very second. It could be that babies have eyelashes. And how could babies get any fucking cuter than having little baby eyelashes? Or maybe it's just that you took a breath and you didn't think you'd be able to do that. You did it. Amaze balls. You fucking breathed. Yeah, there's a little theme here about being grateful, too. Which is hard when you're down in the dumps, but... Hey, I'm not the one making up the advice. I'm just pulling the cards. Well, that was me interfering. Okay. Don't... <laughs> this is so ironic. I'm sorry. I'm not making it up. The very first card is, don't be an ungrateful shit. Seriously, if you're reading these cards, you're privileged as fuck. You can read. Reading is super fucking fantastic. Think about how many generations of people didn't get to read. Fuck yeah. We're not completely fucked. We know how to read. Then, the moment you start acting like life is a blessing, it starts feeling like one. Oh my god, you guys. See, I was nagging a little, but it's mainly the cards, so be mad at them if you're going to be mad. The moment you start acting like life is a blessing, it starts feeling like one. Get grateful, get grateful, get grateful. If you're looking for answers, the easiest fix to any problem is to start with gratitude. Look around and name something that's awesome. Do you have a truly amazing cat? Fuck yeah! What's awesome about that cat? Aren't you glad it's alive? Do you hate cats and don't have one? Isn't it amazing that you don't have to live with one of those furry little creeps? Okay, now keep going. The world doesn't owe you anything. Acting like the world owes you something keeps you in a mentality of scarcity. Here's the hard truth. The universe never borrowed anything from you. All the gifts she's given you so far have been gifts. If you treat everything in your life like that, you'll be a lot happier. Unless you're a dick, then you'll just be grumpy. It's your choice, boo-boo. And the last one from this deck. Pretending to be a savage won't heal that hole in your heart, baby. You know who the real OGs are? The ones who ain't got shit to hide from anyone, especially themselves. Real OGs claim their humanity. They hold those wounds up to the light like Mufasa holding Simba. Can you hear that inspirational music starting? Yeah, that's you starting the hero's journal. Oh, uh, uh. sorry, that's me stumbling again. Yeah. That's you starting the hero's journey, love bug. Sorry, guys. I'm trying. I'm doing my best here. I love this deck. It just came today, and I had to do this pick a card because I love this deck. All right, couple more rebel cards. Then we'll go to the black affirmators, and I will let you go from my insanity. And here we go. Dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. 
Make it rain. Stop sleeping so damn much. Wake up! You're missing some cool shit. I gotta say, between the two decks, I really like this. The uh, Spiritualist Buff deck the best. I enjoy this one, but I like the detail in the other one. Get the fuck out of your head. Get in your heart. It misses you. And that is, I gotta say, from my own experience, that is when we're most miserable, is when we're in our heads and not tuning in to how we feel. We talk ourselves out of doing stuff that would really be good for us because it's risky or we don't know what's coming. And our heart says, you know what? You know what you want to do? Go for it. Enough of me. Sorry. Here's your next card. You need a good fucking cry. Get the ugly cry on. Let that shit go. Your soul will thank you. I gotta say that's showing up in every group. Shit is going down with your job. Reevaluate, change your perspective, or fucking quit. Then we have, you are giving away your power. You are a badass. Act like it. And your last rebel card is, you think someone is lying. They are. All right, so the last deck is the Black Affirmator deck. For group, oh, group number three. Here we go. Everyone's a teacher. Everyone I cross paths with is a teacher in that moment. The ones who give me the fun lessons are the ones I call friends. The ones who give me the hard lessons I sometimes call a-holes. They've chosen a tough job, but someone's got to do it. So today I'm thanking all the a-holes. Thank you, a-holes, for playing your part in making me a better person. And then we have the manifestation card. If you could have anything you wanted, what would it be? Get specific and get greedy. You are holding a magic wand and you can conjure up anything. Could it be that when you declare your wishes out loud, you're actually casting a spell for your dreams to come true? Or is it just that, in a very practical sense, the more people you speak with about your desires, the more folks there are who know what you want and might have the means to help you make them happen? Either way, stop waiting and start manifesting. But don't use that word if you don't want to. Let's get a couple more of these. Couple more spirit, please. Not on the floor. Okay, thank you. Well, we got one more, and it's a good one to end on because it is magic. I believe in magic. I see evidence of it all the time. And though the tricks can probably be explained away by something sensible and ordinary, I'd rather not ruin the fun. Other people can fill their days with mere coincidence. I'll fill mine with, holy crap, that's unbelievable. Oh, there was one that snuck behind here. Even better one to end on, self-love. I openly embrace a feeling of self-love, the PG kind. I love myself because I understand myself. I love myself as the most committed partner I will ever have. I show myself love any way that I can. And when I screw up, I remember to be sweet and gentle with myself. If not, I'm going to make myself sleep on the couch. Got that, self? All right, pile number three that chose this sphere, which I believe is Celeste type. Could be angel light. It's blue. It has something to do with angels. All right, guys. If you liked this kind of pick a card, a thumbs up would let me know that. And if you would like to subscribe to the channel, that would be really awesome. Thank you so much for joining me and take care.